Well, folks, I got to just say that if I could hold that World Series trophy right here, that would just be amazing. We saw our fourth World Series championship for the Boston Red Sox. Absolutely amazing. Um, we won in 2004, 2007, 2013, and now 2018. What a season, what a ride. I'm your host, Nick Face. Welcome to Face the Facts. Sitting to my left today, we have Tom Expert Smith sitting in the, right. uh, the, uh, the middle chair, and we have <laughs> Phil Healy, the program coordinator here for NorCam TV. In his, in, in his square. And, yeah. and the fill seat. And the fill seat. And the fill seat. Yeah, my chair, my groove is The hot there. seat. The hot seat. <laughs> it is warm. My I just, I, I'm still in a state of awe about yeah. what we saw. The last time we were with you, we were doing our World Series preview show. We were talking about what our expectations were against the L.A. Dodgers. We all felt that the Red Sox had a great chance at winning. This man right here, sitting in the center seat right here, what did you? What was your prediction again? I said four or five games. I was five, I was leaning more towards six. I think you were more towards seven games. Yeah, I, I went. Yeah, totally you wanted Halloween night. It. Although I kind of, yeah, I kind of, yeah. I kind of ended. I, I mean, I was like, I was leaning more towards the five games because I figured L.A. would take a game in L.A. Mm -hmm. and yeah. sure enough. And it took him eighteen innings. It it sure did. Oh, <laughs> took him two games. It took him two sure games did. to win. Yeah. <laughs> well, lo and behold, it ended up taking five games. And the Boston Red Sox are, again, World Series champions from a team that it's crazy, man. will probably go down, at least right now, as the greatest Red Sox team well, that's, that's ever been together. one of the things we didn't that's even talk argument, about before yeah. we even previewed. We really we, didn't. No. It, I mean, it's something We can't that really we, talk about it until yeah, it's but, all but, done. But, right? but yeah. we could have said in theory, oh, in theory, if they yeah, win, yeah. you know, they I really call it. Well, yeah. yeah. I agree. No, that's true. That's true man. You have the 2004 team, which is very special. Did their... World Series championship took 86 years for that one to get together. Mm -hmm. That was a wonderful team. I remember that like it was yesterday. On went against the Yanks and the Cardinals. On, on all oh, the yeah. heroics that happened from that series. Yeah. Then you have this series, which was definitely for the record books, with obviously how long certain games were. <laughs> sure. um, but I mean, talent-wise, from top to bottom, I've never seen a team that you put together an entire roster of people. And you use basically every single person on that roster to help you win. In game four, that actually, excuse me, game three, that marathon game that was in LA, you saw 24 out of 25 players on that playoff roster that used. Crazy. The only person that didn't get, oh, two, excuse me, 23. Oh. Oh, right. It was 23 out of 25. It was Drew Pomerantz and Chris Seal did not get used in that oh, game yeah, that's three. That's right. Because Sale, they wanted him technically to come back for four. Yeah. Right. But we ended up getting word that Rodriguez was going to be your game four starter. And then Chris Sale will be pushed back yet another game, which would have been game six, yeah, not if five. It to Boston, yeah. What I want to do right now is we'll talk about all, uh, everything that we saw from the series. But I want to break it down game by game. So we want to go back first to last Tuesday, which would have been game one. Um, that was at Fenway Park. That was the matchup with Chris Sale versus Clayton Kershaw. And it was a game that, again, it took some timely hitting, and it took a pinch hit at bat to make that win possible for the Red Sox. So that was the game that will go down as the Eduardo Nunez pinch hit. I think it was a three-run home run. Three-run homer, yeah. To give the Red Sox the lead. Well, they were up still. I think they were up like four to three, or what was it like? It was. Was the score eight to three? Final score? No, the final score was nine to four. Nine, nine to four. four. Were they um, up or were they tied? They were. They were up six to four. Oh, okay. And he it hit the still, home run to put them up. That's what it I believe it was. It was still close enough, you know. It, it was yeah. definitely one of those games where you didn't feel super comfortable. You yeah. feel like you needed a little bit more runs for cushion and all there. Oh, Kimbrell doesn't give you any confidence. Oh, none at all. Sorry. <laughs> no, there none was. I forget which game it was, but I texted him. I was like, um. Oh, no, it was actually the uh, Game 5 winner when I was like, oh. He was like, oh, they got this, they got this. I was like, I need to wait another inning or two. This right. was when they were up one run. I was like, I, yeah, I need to wait an inning or two, two to, to one see. Or yeah, it was like yeah. a one-run game. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> from Game yeah. 1, from my biggest takeaway was obviously Chris Sale was going to be starting. He had a little bit more well-rested because yeah. he hadn't pitched since that like belly button infection ring yeah, thing. Yeah. It was like so, seven days or something. I forget. Yeah. So he had like, I think, nine days between oh, that game that one, one start yeah. against Houston and that next start he pitched against, um, obviously, it was the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. But what you saw was even with the Chris Seal not 
you end up seeing Kershaw just not being the typical Kershaw that a lot of people have well, expected. Kershaw, I mean, from what I've seen with Kershaw when he plays against the Red Sox is... They got the book on him, huh? Yeah, they, he can't pitch against them. He can't... Uh, he doesn't do well against them. But I think that's the book on a lot of these players, on a lot of these pitchers, rather, that face the Red Sox, is it seems like these aces that they go up against, whether it's a Kershaw, uh, um, Scherzer. Remember Scherzer. when Porcillo oh, yeah. got that big hit yep. for Porcillo? Uh, against, uh, for that Porcillo got... It was against Washington earlier this year. Well, that uh-huh. also goes back to his and Detroit days. And even Berlander they hit. That goes back yeah. to his Detroit days, too, because he was a teammate of Scherzer back oh, when they were right. in Detroit. Right. Yeah. Um, I feel like I mean, I feel like this team um, has a lot of mix of players that have seen uh, certain pitchers uh, a number of times, whether it's been more than others. Um, I mean, we saw how they hit, how Ortiz hit against Sabathia like a few years ago. They, he yeah. could not get a pitch by him. No. And he got absolutely blasted every time. Yep. Um, I mean, all, of course, the base, the main Red Sox players um, that have been on the team through the system um, have seen a lot of American League aces. But then you have a mix of J.D. Martinez being on Arizona, Porcello mm-hmm. being on a range of teams, whether it was in the, uh, in the American League, Chris Sale playing for the White Sox, seeing all the teams out there more often. Um, I mean, you have a good mix of players that have seen a lot of different pitchers that can give tips to other players on the team. What was your big takeaway from game one, the last Tuesday game, the Tuesday game to uh, start the whole thing? If you can remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels like, it feels <laughs> like ages. If we right. look real tired, yeah, it's, you can just are. blame the Red Sox for it. Yeah. But I guess I'd rather be tired than... Red Sox and I'd Red rather be World tired Series. than depressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. But, uh, yeah, from that game... Sale kind of waning in the, what was it, the fourth? He went in that? He gutted it out outside. Gutted it out a little bit. Yep. Um, and just kind of, you know, the Dodgers being surprisingly um, manufacturing some runs. I mean, they didn't get it. They got a lot of sack flies in that game, I think. And I know they were, like, kind yes. of getting some stuff, playing a little small ball with that. And Manny Machado getting a <sighs> couple ground out RBIs. I remember that. But not really, I remember the Dodgers not getting crazy. I think game two they got. It was a tough a run. Hit. It was a tough scoring game. Game for them. two yeah, was a wasn't... very tight game, and well, the both had cruised in game one. I will yeah. say that. Not that they didn't cruise in other games in the playoffs. But the cru- Dodgers, yeah. I believe, took a two-one lead. I believe the Dodgers in scored the first. Game two, That's and right. that was yeah. the, one of the rare things that we've seen because usually when the Red Sox had scored first in the playoffs, they win. Yeah. So. I remember when it was like two to one at one point, and I'm saying to myself, "Ah, you know what? I still feel okay. I think the Red Sox will end up being fine." Mm-hmm. Then it eventually, I believe it was the bottom of the fifth inning when they started to put some things together. Ben Attendee remember, got that it was walk. very cold yeah, on that yeah. Wednesday night. Yeah. Ben Intendi came what came together and got some and big hits, 10? and then JD yeah. got that bloop single to right field because Puig yeah. was playing in Dorchester. Well, right. um, <laughs> they didn't. And that was kind of the thing too. I know, and you can always, you know, it's kind of cliche, but they say do they. Do visiting teams and NL teams know how to play the wall or know how to play the park? They the don't. Dodgers outfield no. alignment they, yeah. was just awful. Well, Robert should know they better. Like, he should have known better. They looked like a T-ball team out there. Yeah. Does Dave Roberts deserve criticism for the way that he managed in this World Series? Yeah, sure. Okay. There's aspects of it, yeah. yeah. But just like any do other... you think that the that the information and the messages that were given to Dave Roberts were dictated from him or upper management? Well, I think it's always both, isn't it? I mean, there it's it's a chain of command, but I mean, he can also choose not to do a certain thing, whether or not. I mean, it all depends. Do you think he has that relationship with them where he can break chain of command slightly if he sees something differently? I, Go I, ahead, Tom. I feel like, you know, Dave Roberts. They said it a number of times, especially after we found out it was the Dodgers and the Red Sox. They said a number of times that he was a hero back in 2004. That gave the Red Sox, like, led the Red Sox, paved the way for them to. The World Series uh, ring and the trophy. Um, But I feel like whether he has the ability to break the chain or he isn't given that freedom, I feel like he still should have knowing whether they told him or not. He knows that field better than anybody else in that organization. So playing that outfield. And so playing that outfield, he should have played it the way he thought it should have been played. And if it was his... If it, that was what he did, then that's on him. But if it was upper management and he didn't really have a say in it, then... I, the analytics behind the game from the Dodgers lost them that series, I will say. Because 
if you saw the lineups that, that Roberts key. was was sending out there on a nightly basis, hmm. when you had a left-handed pitcher going, when he's going with his left-handed lineup, he's taking out Jock Peterson. He's hmm. taking out um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Cody uh, Bellinger. Bellinger, yeah. excuse me. Oh. He's taking out. Um, Max yeah, Muncy yeah, on some You only saw Cody He's Bellinger letting in game in. one and two. Yeah. Yes, Yasmani Grandal, so the catcher yeah. for the Dodgers, game, all out. Game one. You can't That's take your thumpers out of your lineup and expect to win. Yeah, isn't that like what they got there on? Right. So, lefty, oh, righty, or whatnot, you got to go out with your best. Did we, any of you guys watch any of the Brewers series at all? I know you watched. A little bit I of didn't it. Watch Did any. the Brewers have a lot of left-handers, or was that a thing that... The Brewers were a very interesting team this year because they really weren't relying upon starting pitching so much. Was the bullpen thing? Like, I remember one of the games in the playoffs, I think it was um, uh, Wade Miley went like a third of an inning when he yeah. started. Oh, and yeah, then was... Craig Council, the manager for the Brewers, pulls him and puts his bullpen in. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very interesting way of going about. Well, that might be the future, man. I hope it's not, tell yeah. you the truth. A third of an inning, though, really? I think yeah. it's getting embarrassing. And then you play the next game. I'm used to a starting pitcher, at least from back when we, you know, 04, 05, 06, 07, going, going seven, at least seven innings. strong innings. Yeah. We didn't see that that often outside of, you know, David Price in that game five clincher. Yeah. But, um, but it might be the way, like, they might feel an out. It is definitely a shift in the, in the way baseball's yeah. being played. No, they're going you, you're relying innings, more yeah. upon bullpen firearms. You know, coming together and, mm-hmm. and getting the job done. Well, if you don't have, I mean, the Sox only had, who are their most reliable pitchers? Well, in the playoffs, their most reliable pitchers were Purcello, Price, and Evaldi. Yeah. And then everybody else was in the bullpen. Pretty much. Or even, like, Evaldi and Purcello were in the pen. Oh, yeah. and Price, too. They're well, Rovers, though. Everyone, I mean, those are the Rovers. Those yeah. three guys. Yeah. The Rovers made the entire difference of those, this World Series. Those three guys wanted to pitch every single inning of every single game of that series. Yep. Yeah. That's a, that was a gutty, gutty performance. Now, we're up two games to nothing right now after game two. How were you feeling about this shift into L.A. going um, to game three? It was the Friday night game. I was I was feeling pretty good. I was also feeling that we would get a loss at some point in L.A. Because that's After, the way it worked in the first yeah, two series. Heading, heading to L.A. So we just, heading, oh, there right. were two wins. You had your game, one and two wins at Fenway Park. You're up two games to zero. What were your thoughts before, before Friday night's game even began? I thought maybe it could be a clean sweep. I mean, the yeah, way they kind I of, was too. Yeah, it, well, I think they won convincingly enough the first two games. I think it was a fight up to a point in game two and in game one. And just like with that one, you know, the key hit. They're like, uh, Dodgers couldn't come up with that key hit. And the Sox had two outs or whatever, whenever it happened. Um, Different atmosphere outs, yeah. out in L.A. Because, Fen- you know, you get your cold people atmosphere. Still, oh, yeah. 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 And when then L.A., were, you got 78, 80 degree weather out 40, there. 40,000 seats LA in LA feeling stands. more comfortable at home. Yeah. It's like, okay, what are we going to expect here? I, there was, I mean, I felt like there was going to be a big fight yep. in Game 3, uh, definitely, because no no team wants to come back to their home field and be down 2 nothing and not win the next game. So you knew you needed a big start from Rick Porcillo for Game 3. You knew you needed that. And yep. usually with Porcillo, if he's on, he's yeah. on. If he's yeah. off, he's off. You know basically after the first inning. And That's all. what the commentators even said. And the first <laughs> inning, it was decent. And then the yeah. second inning comes, and then that's when the home run was hit yeah, to make it one nothing. But it was only when he only made one mistake. And he made one mistake. Oh, then, man. because this, is, this was one of the big things that I thought the Dodgers could end up taking some games from the Red Sox is because since they're a National League team, that's a strength for them. Yeah. Dave Roberts has been known to use his bench effectively. And when certain situations come, he's going to be inserting different guys into the lineup. For the Red Sox, they're an American League team. You take the DH away. So you have a J.D. Martinez who's a little hobbled after uh, slipping on second base from game two. Okay. You have to put him into your outfield. So you've got to figure out, okay, is he going to play left? Is he going to play right? They ended up putting him in right. They end up taking Jackie... Uh, no, excuse me, ben they took Ben Intendi out of game three. Yeah. They left. They put um, Mookie to center, and they put Ben Intendi to left. No, you, they put Jackie to center, Mookie to uh, left. Excuse me, yes. <laughs> I'm talking about game four. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Then you also took out Steve Pierce from your lineup, who's been a, a huge thumper oh, and Moreland, from the postseason. Moreland. And Moreland played game three at first base. And then we'll send it, was it You Beckham also or? had um, um, Devers was playing uh, third base. Yeah. And Nunez was out of your lineup for that, too. And you had um, 
Vasquez catching there. I wasn't very pleased with what I saw from the lineup from Cora because Moreland was put into the three spot. You take out Benintendi, your lineup is weaker from going to the Dodgers park. Going Lo and behold, the young it's too. one to nothing until mm -hmm. the top of the eighth inning. The Dodgers had a very good chance at wrapping that up. So they put their best pitcher in. I don't, I don't, uh, um, I don't second guess Dave Roberts and putting Kenley Jensen into the eighth. He knew he needed a win. He was, a, he wanted, he wanted two innings from his closer. Mm -hmm. Jackie Bradley steps up. Jackie Bradley, who people were second guessing core of, why is he playing Not over you, Ben and Tendi? You were always saying, you keep running your Jackie Bradley Jr. shirt like it's happening. It's happening. Like, and right, Jackie Bradley, lo and behold, ties the game at one yeah. to one. Yeah. And I'm just saying to myself, geez, you know, this team, this is their year. Yeah. All these moves that Cora's is making, he's just a genius. I mean, everything he did, everything he did was just and that unbelievable. Was a shot too, and that's the thing. They hit him pretty well in that series too. Yep. And you talk about us you know, being kind of shaky about Kimbrell. Like that was the guy who shut down everyone all year, including up until the World well, Series. Jansen and Osuna, they hit. Yeah. Both. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Again, they hit the best of the best pitchers. Except what's his name? Um, who actually? Who? Who? You can make the argument, Roberts. Oh, Robertson from the Yankees. No, no. no I mean, I'm sorry, but Dave Roberts. Not you can give him. Guff for not putting in um, this relief. Baez? Baez, yes. yes Baez was that not put was into nuts. that. And the Red in, Sox four, were struggling yeah. against that. They were, yeah. Wood, Alex they Wood was the one that Nunez hit the home run off for game one. Yeah, right. And then Baez was the guy that kind of was cleaning up the act a little bit. Yeah. And the Red Sox were kind of left searching for answers against him. Yeah. So now you have a tie game. You're going into extra innings. One one, and yeah. lo and behold, we end up going into... 18 innings. The game doesn't finish well, till 3.30 in the morning on Saturday morning. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are still tired right now. Mm -hmm. Nathan Avaldi comes into the game starting in the 11th inning. So that was supposed to be your game four starter. So he's coming in now. What is going through your mind when this is going on here? Oh. Are we saying Cora's an idiot? Are we saying, you know what, this is the right move. No. We'll figure out what we're going to do tomorrow. We'll I get was, there when we get there. I was saying that we have a shot because... Um, and remember, Evaldi had pitched game one and two out of the bullpen. He was your rover. That's right. Well, so you didn't really inning, know right? what to expect for him coming into was this. Was he the eighth? Or, he yeah. was the eighth inning for both game one and two. It was... Didn't it? Uh, it was 2-2 two -two going into the ninth, right? Or was no, it? then the Red Sox ended up scoring in the uh, 11th or 12th inning. That's I think right. he went in early. It was the 12th inning. And yeah. then there was, was that. The inning, it was there was the, the error from inning. Ann Kinsler, yeah, which yeah. should have won the game. Yeah. Stupid. Kinsler He's slipped on the ball, yeah. threw it away, and a tie yeah. run, tie run, the tying run ended up scoring. Well, that's the thing too. I guess to he advancing could, the game. He also could have held him at uh, third if he just held. No, him. Sure, oh. there were there were two options. They yeah. could have walked Puig yeah, oh, yeah. and gone one headed to the next guy. Instead, they decided to pitch to him. Yeah. He grounds the ball to Kinsler. Kinsler yeah, no, somehow yeah. s slips on the grass. As like, and I've seen the replay a number of times, and it looked like he was already ready to throw as he was slipping. But like, uh -huh. if there was some way he could have done it, he could have just hold, held on to the ball, and like, no one would have scored. You yeah, also no, could have yeah. made the Isn't argument it? that Nunez, because he was Mr. Drama Queen out there, that is another one. Yeah. Let's just be real here. Yes, we understand Nunez plays the game hard and all, but that play going into the stands probably should never have happened. If what? he had been able to keep his balance instead of trying to be Derek Jeter right That's there. That's true. That Forgot run does that not one. get to second base, oh. and the tying run doesn't score. But then again, I mean, I, I want him to catch that ball because that's Bellinger who's at the plate. Yeah. But, you know, I, you also could have yeah. made the case there that Puig shouldn't have been hitting there. They should have well, just walked yeah, him, saying, and you yeah. should have pitched to, um, you <laughs> oh should have. What was that? I don't know. No, no, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's Dave, Alex Cora. And Alex Bell Cora's phone calling. Phone on us in. We need to pitch. <laughs> oh they couldn't find what we were certain. I don't know. One of our phones went off. Wow. Anyway, but uh, so uh, Kinsler. That's hysterical. I don't know. Is that yours? Or yeah, it must be mine. <laughs> Alex Cora is calling, folks. <laughs> oh my lord. Um, but tired. we should we should have just pitched to the catcher. The catcher yeah. should have been the one that should have been. Yep, because he popped out yeah. next in. Then yeah. he popped out. To or end next to the bat. Oh, no, that was tough. Lo and behold, Evaldi is a tough luck loser. Max Muncy comes up, hits the home run in the 18th. Could have almost had a home run in the 14th. Well, you knew it was going to happen yeah. if he, once well, he got up in the But because of how resilient this Red Sox team is, 
they didn't let it bother them. You kind of knew, even when going to bed, when you were probably trying to sleep, but maybe we're like, Jesus, we could have had them. What the heck? We're letting this one go. Mm -hmm. That was me. Um, right. I'm saying to myself, this team is so resilient. They're going to find a way and figure it out. And even with one of the most excruciating losses of the season, they're going to rebound. And they're going to come back and they're going to do this. And the most, Lo and behold, they do. most surprising part about that loss was Price being a... I didn't find out about it until like after after the World Series. Like Price had gone up to Valdi, I guess, and like put his arm around his shoulder as they were walking to the bus or something. I mean, let's be real here. David Price is one of the most liked teammates playing players on the Red Sox. The media people, you know, us nitwits that cover some yeah, of the yeah, stuff yeah. here. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, that, hey, you I, know, don't hey, put Phil and yeah, I on this. I love you? David Price. We I play, love him. We play I Fortnite him. with him all the time. <laughs> yeah. One, one of his We're teams. best friends. David Tinglefingers is just one of the most amazing Red Sox pitchers ever now. Um, he wanted to actually pitch game four. Yep. Same with the, Alex Cora had everybody going in. Even Evaldi mm -hmm. went into the office and said, put me out there. I'm going. Mm -hmm. Even Not, after throwing almost 100 pitches. Yeah, 97 pitches. Because I'm ready to go. Rubber Rama yeah. Baldi and all. So Rodriguez is your game four starter. And that's up against mm -hmm. Milton's own, Milton Mass's own, Rich Hill. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's right. So Rich Hill pitches for the Dodgers. Eddie Rodriguez um, starting. Made me a little only nervous. allowed one yeah. hit. The Red Sox look yeah. awful on game four. You can even look at my Facebook or Twitter account and know that I, I went on and I said, Rich That's Hill is somebody the Red Sox have the book on. There's no excuses yeah. why they can't be yeah, hitting he him. In, uh, Let's age. get it together. Age, right there was a moment in that Red Sox dugout where Chris Sale unloaded on all of his teammates and oh, said, get your blankety, 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 blankety butts together and get out there and play the game. Let's get a win. Let's get a win. And the players didn't know how to react to it. They're like, oh, my God. Like, we got to do something here. I don't think I've ever seen Chris Sale looking like Tom Brady in the dugout or on the sideline. The <laughs> biggest like dunce cap move of the entire series from Dave Roberts yep. was taking Rich Hill out and putting Ryan Madsen into the game. Yep. Like, I understand if Rich Hill was tiring, you take him out. But Mitch Moreland is up at the plate. Shame on him for not knowing that a left-hander is due on the bench for the Red Sox. And you throw your left-hander in. Moreland probably doesn't pitch hit there. And hit that three-run home run. Because who did he pinch hit for? Um, Moreland pinched hit for um, one of the pitcher spots. Yeah, that's right. oh, yeah. So Moreland hits the it hits the uh, big three-run home run. Yeah. Now it's four to three, and I'm just oh, like, oh, rough, here man. we go. Everybody's this going is going to happen. <laughs> and lo and behold, it does. And I saw like, oh, four nothing, and like one hit. And as I'm soon as that home around. run came, yeah. then I see uh, four like three. Four I'm like, three. this game's done. Yeah. We got it. Uh, Steve Pierce comes up in the ninth. Or eighth. It might, oh, no, I think it was the eighth. It was the eighth, eighth. Yeah. eighth and makes it 4 4 the ninth is with his home run. Now we're in a tie game, folks. Off who? Off Jensen. Off yeah. Jensen again. Yeah. Then you have more action happening in the ninth. We exploded in the ninth. You have Devers come up, get an RBI hit. Then you have Pierce again. Pierce hit the home run in the eighth. The seventh was Moreland. The eighth was when the, when the solo shot was hit. Then Pierce comes up and hits the three-run bomb. Mm -hmm. And then no, Bogarts yeah, double, comes yeah. up and doubles, and that makes it 9-4. So like, oh, my God, look at this. This is great. Yeah. I'm feeling great. You know, all we need is one more. Then the ninth comes. And then you second-guess Cora a little bit by saying, why is Kimbrell in the game? It's 9-4. Throw Brazier. Throw somebody else. Like, come on. Kiki Hernandez, yeah. who's hitting like a buck Kike. 25. Kike, not Kike. Kike. Oh, Kike, Kike. excuse me. <laughs> hits a home run off of uh, Kimbrough. 9-6 now. And then he's starting to get erratic and all that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, throw a strike. How many runs do you need? And oh. then he gets the job done. And then yeah. we're all deep breathed on to the next game. Then we find out. I was almost, you know, heart palpitations were happening. Sunday after, I, me too. Sunday afternoon, we find out that it's not. It's, it's not Chris Sale pitching. It's yeah. David Price. And I'm like, okay, all right. I wasn't expecting that, but all right. <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, David Price. <laughs> Please no. I got yeah. this, Boston. Um, yeah. Comes out and pitches the best game probably of his career. Mm -hmm. And the story's yeah, written. You had Mookie home run. Your bats that were pretty much dead. Mookie. That series of J.D., Bogarts, uh, Betts. And then Pierce again. Pierce hits another Twice. home run. Twice. 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 Two. Yeah, two home runs. Two. Did he get four home runs in the World Series? Yeah. Uh, did he? Maybe five. Wow, really? 
We get four. two in the last game. Yeah. yeah, it was four. And then one in... Um, one in game four, and then one in um, game two. Two in game four. Two no, in no, game no, four. Two no, game two five. in game five, one in game four. Okay, yes. And he did And yes. then one in game two. Oh, did it? Game one? No, 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 no. It real it was two it was two home runs in game four. It was only one in game it was only one in game five. Remember, he hit the solo shot and then the three run home run in the fourth game. No, 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 no. And uh, game so this is gonna be just a uh, part of the thing where we just doubt each other. Yeah. But no, in uh <laughs> in game uh four he hit a base clearing double. That's what, That's it, was. what it was. That's what it was. And no, it wasn't yeah, the and then, you're right. Phil is Xander right. hit the double. Phil is the right. real expert on everything that goes on. I, there. If there's one thing I, I only I call James. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I do remember that. I yeah, so, no, you were trying history, to tell that, and he interrupted. Lo, lo and behold, right, no. history gets made. The Red Sox go out and win the World Series. You have wait, Chris Sale wait. coming in in the All ninth. Right. No, what was he? No, I was. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna. Chris Sale shutting the door, closing it out. Did you agree with that move? Which yep. one? The Chris Sale coming mm -hmm. in. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I thought that, that's, that's the me? one person I wanted out there. You kidding I love me? Evaldi. If you, if you told me at the beginning of the season, even, in, be, uh, even at the beginning of preseason, if you had told me Chris Sale is going to pitch the last, what, two innings of the no, World, no, no, of the world inning, Series? Yeah. What, one inning? Whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah sorry. To pitch the last inning of that's the, what we all wanted, the correct. series yeah. clinching. Game of the World Series yep. with three straight strikeouts, yep. and end the game and end the season and end the postseason on striking out Machado going dink down hat. to his knees. Oh, oh, what a dink he is! That was great, man. I, I would have said Machado fan around here. I'm just gonna say they're done. They're I would done. I would have said absolutely not. First of all, mm. Machado's not even on the Dodgers right now, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know why you're trying to tell me that. And yeah. second of all, there is no way. That could ever possibly happen. And also, you're a time traveler. What are you doing? <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah. This is insane. But that could not have ended any more perfectly than it did. Yeah. I mean, Machado swinging, going down, landing on uh, a knee, looking uh, looking like a Especially after dweeb. his comment about being down 2-1. to one. Oh, we got this. We can yeah. win it. No one, no one else could do it. Oh, no one else did, and no one. Manny <laughs> Bug Machado. He'll be a real good player in the longest yard baseball edition in jail. Well, yeah. Well, well maybe. Who knows? Well, because uh, he stepped on Pierce's foot that game. He yeah. did. He was a he kind of We were talking about him when you were in. Swung his bat and nailed Vasquez in the head too. Uh, well, that's that that happens. That, but it's just like yeah, he's. I mean, he is a jerk. He's just a weirdo. But remember, we were talking uh, when he came by to edit the last uh, episode, which is right after they won. Yeah. We were talking about that moment where he just kind of, he's buckling, and I just wanted Vasquez to, like, slightly push him over. Yeah. Just a little, not a lot, not like a big push, but just, like, because he tags him. That's the best thing, too. Just karma. Yeah, exactly. Just, he, like, he buckles, and then you see Vasquez just, like, you know, just tag him. Just go, boom. Well, I, Pull out, I shove him. Come little, on. I wanted just a little more of a tap just to, like, to get, like, eh. <laughs> just almost cartoonishly, like, pushing him over. Right. I've, I've never but, seen, I've never seen a player more excited on a championship winning team than David Price. No one jumped out quicker from that dugout <laughs> hey, than David Price. He holds all the cards yeah. now, guys. There you go. He's the card holder. That's pretty great. But we found out yesterday when the parade was going on that Chris Sale, I mean, not Chris Sale, excuse me, that David Price will be here for the next four years, pick up his option. You know what? Honestly, I'm happy about it. Yeah, why not? I'm happy about it. Good for him. If he, he does, deserves he does, all the good. credit. Honestly, everything that's ever happened from him now, every, in my eyes, it's almost like it's erased. Yeah, sure. It's erased. You won your World Series. We tip your cap to you. Way to go. Way to go, David On the note of the parade, there was a picture on Instagram of a kid holding up a sign. 16 years old, 11 parades. It's like... Oh, like it's nuts, man. Title Town. Title Town. Well, it's Title Town. It's City crazy. of Champions. It's that's almost where we boring. are, Boston. It's that's almost where we are. boring. But that's why people hate us. Eh, well, I think there's plenty of other reasons, but... Oh, you mean people that throw beers at people and... And break yeah, trophies? Yeah, so. And break trophies yeah. and <laughs> yeah. hit managers? Yeah. About yeah. That. Well, my, my buddy, Shame on you, My buddy is a duck that. boat driver, and he oh, had... He had Pearson in his uh, duck boat. Yeah. But he said, like, oh, there were like 25 cans in, my, in the duck boat. I'm like, oh, all right. Um, the other news, uh, the other uh, nose, the other yeah. note. Yeah. Yeah. The other, I got, other I got, thing I of nose. news, too, <laughs> was news, Steve Pierce was your MVP. Did you guys agree with that, or do you feel it should have been Price? Well, you and I were texting during the game about that, and you said, oh, I think it's going to be a co-MVP. I wanted and a co, said, but you can't nice. give two, two Chevy Silverados to someone. That was but, why you oh, can't. Right. Well, but, two beautiful red truck. Beautiful. But, beautiful. If, but if it's not for Pierce, Price doesn't get the win. 
Correct. If not for Pierce, Price doesn't get the win. You don't you don't get a win if a player doesn't trust, hit two home trust runs. Trust me, I'm very pleased for Steve no, Pierce. I mean, what an acquisition! Yeah. What a difference maker! But now is at the trade deadline, or is yep. he was at the trade deadline. deadline. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't uh, Kinsler, yeah. which was a <laughs> see you later. Bust. And then he was. Evaldi. I mean, he, he did Evaldi okay. Evaldi was your guy. Everyone. The Red Sox decided to not get another bullpen arm, and you know what? Kudos to you, Dombrowski, for sticking with your guns. Mm. You know the bullpen was awesome. The bullpen yeah. was your reason, big reason yeah. why this series. Was one. Mm -hmm. Why this World Series was a part of it. Joe the Kelly, bullpen man. was amazing. Now you have some free agents. Yeah. I bring back Joe Kelly. What do you do? I, I don't know. If he does that all the time, then yeah. If he's let <laughs> shut down weirdo like... Who um, is your number one priority thing. right now to bring back for next year's 2019 team? I know who We have difference of opinion I here. I know who your number one, no, number one we'll player is. We'll go with you, Tom, is, first. But, uh, well, we all we all know we all want Kin Kinsler out. Bye. He's on uh, the <laughs> yeah. island of misfit toys I mean, right now. He, I mean, he did. Uh, He's in Madagascar right now playing yeah. with the lemurs. Despite that, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we slipping over the lemurs. Sorry. Yeah, if he can yeah. play within the lemur league, well, because they need a second base. But here, here's the question though: If you don't bring him back. Does Pedroia end up playing next year? You got Holt, you got Nunez, you got. You can other plug people. that in. You're yeah, right. that's kind of. Yeah, right. but I mean, Nunez has a bum knee. How much longer is he going to last? But you do it like you said, Holt, but you know. I think one of the priorities is Steve Pierce. I think another priority is Nathan Evaldi. Yeah, yeah Evaldi to me is the top, but I mean, like. You know, I say just bring back every player that you can from this team. I mean, sure. uh, why not? Ride it out. Yeah. Just ride on the high. Sales I'm option disagree. was picked up, so Sales oh, back next year. Nunez yeah. is back next year. Um, I like Nunez a lot. Are we all in agreement that Kimbrel's out of here? I mean, you can say that he's not the best reliever, but he didn't. He officially didn't give up a game. And I know that's a lot. And he didn't have like a one-run yeah. deal going on. And maybe you don't agree with him. Yeah, that's but true. He didn't come into a one-run game. I gotta ask game. one no, person's opinion. No, no. Um, in the outfield back there, Norcam Jason. No, he's, Put your, oh, he's choking right now. Yeah, he's yeah. choking. That uh, must mean that. Um, he wants to be best buddies with Craig Kimbrell and sign him for a five-year, $90 million deal. Is that correct? <laughs> no. Uh, no, you got Brazier, though. You don't need Kimbrell Yeah, no, anymore. I guess you're right. I if mean, you bring Kelly back, you can honestly go with the who's better. You could go with Kelly, Barnes, Brazier. You know, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait a second. Did he just say Matt Barnes' name in that? I have. Oh. It makes me sick. I'm, right. I'm choking on that's, my own words, folks. Wait, isn't isn't Matty that, that play, didn't that player uh, block so, a certain someone on Twitter? Apparently, really? I'm unblocked now. Did you wait? Who? How did what? How did <laughs> how did you get blocked by him? What did you do to him? By everybody. My he Lord. disses everybody. No. Oh, is it just that? No, I'm coming after your, your family. No, 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 we can't. Yeah, what did you say? Die in a hole. No, oh, I don't know. Hey, Lord, that actually, um, that's not too bad. No, considering he's just when he was going, he's so sensitive. He's so. I didn't give him much, honestly. I just just called him the worst Jared Carabas. pitcher ever. Yeah. Jared Carabas has, was blocked by him too. Yeah. Well, so, that doesn't oh, say they, much. I think Jared Carabas is blocked by a lot of people. Say it again. Uh, he writes for the Globe. I forget. He or writes Barstool. for Barstool. Oh, Barstool. He actually got his own duck boat yesterday. Kind of jealous really? about that. Kind of jealous. Barstool. Uh, well, I guess. He said it was the greatest day of his life yesterday. I well, totally can understand one, why. One of my sure. buddies got interviewed yeah. by Barstool yesterday at the yeah. parade. No, really? um, <laughs> so there's a lot of off-season yeah. things. My top two priorities are Evaldi and Pierce. I, I'm pretty sure that those oh, two will be back. We're not even talking about Mookie Betts. Uh, we re Mookie did not have a good World Series. Well, no, I mean, you've got to figure he's out. He's in the last year of his contract. Uh, he's got two more years of arbitration. Oh, yeah, he's right. two. Um, this off-season, the Red Sox really got to figure out who they're going to be signing here long-term. Is it Mookie? Is it Xander? Is it Chris Sale? you got to lock up somebody. So that's another Chicken thing that's ready. on my um, yeah. big priority list oh, to do. No. Now, this is just a half-hour edition. When we come back for our next episode shortly, we'll be talking about the Bruins, the Celtics, the Patriots, <clears> because they really oh, haven't no. got much attention from anything. Well, no, sadly. how could they have been? I mean, well, why, when you have a World Series championship, yeah, there has, you can't. There hasn't been much to talk about for those teams anyway, really. I mean, the Pats I mean, kind of in The Pats are rolling, but that's always, right. that's, I mean, that's no-brainer. So we just want to say one more time, congratulations to the world champion, 2018 Boston Red Sox. Woo -woo. Absolutely incredible season. We, um, we hope that uh, everybody gets a chance to celebrate done. as well with that. Yeah. If you went to the parade yesterday, we hope you survived. And, um, Didn't get hit by any cans. Yeah. Final words, gentlemen.
<laughs> Dan, Dan Shaughnessy had a great quote. Uh, thank Dave Roberts for two World Series. Yeah. Yep. And although I don't think it was Dave Roberts' fault entirely. I the wouldn't blame thing. him no, completely. No, I don't blame him. But I mean, it's you know, I it was great. That was an awesome run. And uh, Jason Norcam, Jason and I were talking about it. Uh, Houston was the bigger. Uh, barrier for us in I, a lot we, of ways. We talked about that too. I and, felt the same way. Yeah, and it's, yeah. I, I felt I had more anxiety about that in a way, but I also, yeah, this was kind of awesome, and I feel bad, but I didn't rub it in the face of my buddies in L.A. Mm -hmm. or, it was true Dodger fans, right? But um, yeah, no, it was, it was awesome, man. It was, it was kind of, it's almost you don't get a chance to see many of these, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, except you're the kid from the parade, and so. we've seen eleven. We've so. seen enough. It's kind of nuts. No. Yeah. We want more. <laughs> we want. More. I, I'm fine. I'm, if, they, I, if they ended, I'd be fine. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I. Um, I live for this. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a chance, I, I'd say uh, watch two segments from the the pre parade yesterday. Uh, there were two quotes that I really liked. One was said by Sam Kennedy. One was said by Alex Cora. Uh, the Alex Cora one was about the Yankees and the the Yankee series, and then the Sam Kennedy quote was about. Uh, what the four World Series meant to the team as a whole. Um, so if you get a chance, I'd just say look up those. That's a good and thing to look at. Absolutely. My other thing is I have, to, I have to tip my cap to the person in the crowd yesterday who had one of the best signs that was out there. The sign said, Manny Machado sits when he pees. I'm going to leave yeah. it at that. All right? My Lord. <laughs> we will see you next time.